Rick Hendrick's been quoted as saying um, that he was just under the assumption that you were unhappy and he probably should have taken a deep breath and had another conversation with you. To what extent do you think if communication was better at the end, the outcome might have been different? I don't know. Um, the fact that lies in the Hendrick story was I had really good communication with Ricky Hendrick, who was Rick's son, who was a bit more my age. I think he was maybe seven, eight years older than I was. Well, he was unfortunately killed in a tragic plane accident uh, in 2004. So I kind of felt like I lost <clears throat> my, I'm 18, right? So talking, going and talking to Rick Hendrick, who's, I don't know, 48, 50, whatever, how old he was, is not quite my guy. So there just was something not clicking with me, with the team, with, with whatever it was. And also the 2007 incident at the All-Star race, my outbursts and acting out a few times and um, was ultimately the demise of the relationship. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I mean, I had to sit down with, with Jeff Gordon for an hour. I went to his office one day, he called me in, we sat down, you know, and so I would say that that conversation came off more if it was 51 to 49%, like 51%, Kyle's unhappy here, however it came off to him, well, that was the message delivered to Rick, right? So that's why Rick said what Rick said. Um, but it could have been fixed. Like it wasn't some, a relationship to terminate, but it ended up happening. Rick called me. He was like, hey, we're, we're going to have to go in a different direction for next year. You're, you're not going to be our guy. Like, what do you remember thinking at the time? I thought my career was over because I was getting released by the number one team in the sport. So who the hell else is going to want to take a chance on a, on a, um, a firestorm of emotions of Kyle Busch, I guess? But you had to pretty quickly realize that wasn't the case because when I was talking to Coach Gibbs the other day, he was saying they were pretty heavily recruiting you and they were concerned you'd go uh, somewhere else. It was back to being like free agency in football, we were recruiting. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. You were recruiting a hangout. I, I used to tell everybody the only thing that was different about this, uh, you know, recruiting in pro sports and with NASCAR, money is legal. <laughs> so <laughs> we were after it, you know. <laughs> it was a full-blown recruiting deal. And uh, so in every way, we were trying to present what we thought this is a good deal for him. You actually, I believe, took less money to go to JGR. Um, why? So I get released from Hendrick, and I have the opportunity to go on the race shop tour. And I went and visited with eight different teams and started to get a better feel for, hey, okay, I'm actually wanted. Not think that, um, you know, my, my livelihood and my life and my job is on the line every single week. So I went to Gibbs, uh, talked with him. Uh, you know, Joe was like, you're this uh, fireball of emotions type kid and you're kind of in trouble a lot. Like, why should we hire you? And I was like, hey, fact of the matter is you probably shouldn't. He kind of wins people over when he's away from the racetrack. I think around the racetrack, you get him in a competitive situation and he, you know, kind of wears his emotions and everything on his sleeve. I was like, you know, I've made a, a lot of mistakes and I feel like I haven't quite had the support system behind me that I need in order to be able to learn from some of the mistakes and to harness my emotions a little bit better. And I told Joe, I was like, I think you for who you are and the people that you've worked with and helped in the NFL. If you're an NFL guy and you're any good at it, you pretty much want to rip that guy's head off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think Joe has a pretty good sense of being able to harness that. And he called me every day, like wanting me. Like, hey, where are we at, man? Are we getting close? And that, that meant something to you. I didn't quite have that with, with Rick over there. I, I didn't hear from him a whole lot. But even still, when I was hired, I, I heard from Joe a bit more, and I had raced with his son, Coy, in the truck series before, so he and I were kind of friends, like we knew each other. So then I, I had a good relationship with Joe, also from the beginning, who kind of became like that grandfather type guy. In what ways have you found the most effective way to work with Kyle to be? Well, I, I would say that, you know, 
you know, constantly communicating and talking the way we do here, because there's some disagreements at times, there's some arguments at time, and uh, you get a real feeling for people's personalities. And Kyle is pretty much, you know, he's going to be forceful. He's going to tell you what he's thinking. I think in Kyle's case, when he came to us, single guy focused totally on racing. And as we've gone through the years, Sam, you know, they wind up getting married and now it's Brexton. So his family now, uh, you know, changes a guy too. I remember one of the things I'll tell you a lot about Kyle, I guess it was 15 when we won the championship there. And so about halfway of the press conference, I heard him go, gosh, dang it, like that. And I went, what, 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 what are you talking about? He goes, I should have held out on that contract. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out loud, man. <laughs> Him, man, he was upset that he had already signed his contract. 